Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to, the, what the un, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Please pray with me. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I've committed a, one of the grave pastoral sins today. This first part of the sermon is going to be about one of my children, and I neglected to ask them if I could share this story, so hopefully forgiveness is going to come instead of anger. It's not a bad story. It's a good story. I'm getting a look of, uh-oh. When my son Alex was four, his preschool teacher would introduce a big word for the month. She wanted them to learn to use big words in their vocabulary, and she would use it um, often, find ways to incorporate it into the lesson, and hopefully they would retain it. So for Alex, who didn't speak until he could actually speak in sentences, this was a great joy. He wouldn't just learn the word or its meaning, but he would then use it in everyday conversation from that point on. Words like tenacity and courage and perseverance. So one time when my husband and I decided to go out for the evening, we hired a babysitter from the church named Jonathan as one of the people came out of the church today saying all the best babysitters come from church, don't they? And I said, yes, they do. But Jonathan was a favorite, especially because he was a guy, but also um, Jonathan would play sports with Alex outside. And so one time they decided to play basketball in our driveway, and we had a regulation height basketball goal on the side of our driveway. And so Jonathan would take a shot. He'd let Alex take a shot, and then Jonathan got kind of tired, and Alex kept going, and so he'd, he'd uh, shag the ball for Alex and give him the ball back. And, of course, Alex was four, so he was only about, like, three, three and a half feet tall. But about 15, 20 minutes, he would just shoot, and Jonathan would give him the ball, and he'd just shoot, and Jonathan would give him the ball, and he'd just shoot, and Jonathan would give him the ball. And Jonathan said, finally, he said to him, Alex, buddy, I don't think you're ever going to make it into the basket. Why do you keep trying so hard? And Alex looked straight at him and said, I'm persevering. <laughs> Miss Pomacall was so proud. Of course, he never made the basket that day or for a few more years, but I often think about that story, and I wonder what the true lessons really were and who probably learned the most. I shared another story with the council this past week at council meeting, and it was about an author who had this idea for a book and sent his book to over 130 publishers. By the 75th, he was told no one would ever buy it or read it. By 100, his agent quit. I guess we'll never know how many times he would have kept trying because finally, after 130, somewhere after 130, a small publisher in Florida finally agreed to publish the book. And the name of that book was Chicken Soup for the Soul. And the, writer, the author was Jack Canfield and um, his friend Mark. This book now has over 250 various editions and has sold over 500 million copies all over the world. It took 130 publishers. Our gospel story today is also a story about perseverance. It's about a woman who was seeking justice and who must face an unjust judge to get this justice for herself. 
There are so many obstacles in this story that stack up against her. First and foremost, she was a woman. And women of those times had literally no rights. And so to even be heard um, was a miracle in and of itself. And so Jesus would have known that, and that's why he would have used a woman as the example in this parable to show just how hard this was. Additionally, the judge was unjust and unfaithful, didn't believe in God and didn't like people, apparently. And he knew it. And it would seem that maybe power had gone to his head. And while I don't really know the circumstances of why this woman was had to cry for justice, it could easily be envisioned, I think, that uh, perhaps the judge was not ruling in her favor because of his own interests or maybe someone else's interests that he was wanting to keep in good with. Or maybe he just didn't care. Maybe he just didn't want to give the case the time of day, but for whatever reason, he refused to grant her justice. But this woman had great perseverance and appealed and appealed and appealed over and over again. It would have been very easy for her or anyone really to give up and say to themselves, of course, this is never going to happen. I'm a woman. This is just not going to happen. I don't know why I'm crying. But she didn't give up. She persevered until finally the judge was so tired of her coming back. He said, okay, fine, I'll grant you justice just because I don't want to see you again. So this gospel comes in the middle of Jesus' ministry throughout the region of Galilee and, and then on into Jerusalem. If you look back at the previous chapter, the end of chapter 17, Jesus has just addressed the disciples saying, the days are coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. They will say to you, look there, or look here. Do not go, do not set off in pursuit. Then Jesus tells what will happen on that day. Immediately after this is when then Jesus tells this parable about pers persevering in prayer. As if to explain that rather than searching about, stay, continue to pray, even if you're longing and you haven't seen anything yet. He tells the disciples, if an unjust and unwilling judge will grant you justice after your persistence, how much more will a loving and faithful and righteous judge or God grant what we seek or what we need? So this story is a beautiful example of hope and a motivator for all God's people to keep being persistent in prayer. But if you're like me, however, I sometimes, maybe even often, falter when it comes to praying persistently. And sometimes, if I'm honest, I even question, is this really working? I love to hear the stories of prayers that are answered. I love that. I also mourn the stories when it seems that prayer has not been answered. I often hear that God answers all prayers. It's not necessarily how, how we want him to or the way we expect. Or sometimes God answers with a yes or a no or a not yet. Or, as Garth Brooks sang in the 90s, we thank God for unanswered prayers. And we read in Romans that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us when we don't know how to pray. In a sense, praying for us, but I wonder sometimes how much that prayer will sound like mine actually did. What changes between that conversation between me and God when the Holy Spirit intercedes. And just as Jacob does in our Old Testament reading today, sometimes we wrestle with God even in prayer. In today's gospel, though, I hear something different. I hear that prayer is what keeps the conversation going. It's how we're able to persistently and faithfully present what we need or what we would like or what the world or the world's people need as far as justice to God. In this story, we're told that God will grant justice, and so we should persist in prayer. Jesus goes on to ask at the end of this story, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? So it's almost as if, really, even though we've broken those two stories into 
and not just to different paragraphs with different titles, but a whole different chapter. It's almost like that story in 17 goes with the story in 18. He starts out with, you will be longing for the coming of the Son of Man. And then he ends this story with, will God find faith on earth? So it's that wrap-up question. And Jesus tells them not to seek on that day, but to persist in prayer. This question, will there be anyone who will be faithful? Maybe that means, will you continue to persist in prayer even when you don't know how or even how quickly your request may come to fulfillment? So, like my son, Alex, who kept going even when the end wasn't in sight, or Jack Canfield, even, who believed that people would read a book of 100 inspirational stories, even when 130 publishers didn't, kept going until it was published. We are called to persist in prayer, not knowing when or how prayer will be answered, but simply knowing that our persistence and our prayer helps us to be faithful. Will the Son of Man find faith on earth? Will we continue to believe as many times as it takes to see God's justice unveiled? We long to be near Christ. We long to seek justice. And so, as Jesus teaches us, we pray. We, those with faith, pray with perseverance. Amen.